fighting with all her might, had nearly reached Olympus on her quest to defeat Typhon, the dreaded god destroyer. Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Haynes, Senior Editor of Video Games at Common Sense Media, and I'm here today with a preview of Mortals Phoenix Rising, an upcoming action-adventure role-playing game from Ubisoft for the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, Nintendo Switch, Windows PC, and Google Stadia. It's out December 3rd, 2020. As you can see from the video, it has a sweeping, epic, open-world adventure feel, very similar to that of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, another Ubisoft game which was also set in ancient Greece. However, while that one was a little bit more realistic as far as its ancient world presentation, this one has much more of a mythological feel, as well as a little bit more of a cuter, cartoonish style presentation, but don't let that fool you, because Phoenix Rising has just as much depth as Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Although, as you can see kind of with the narration, it has its tongue planted firmly within its cheek, as you can see with this banter between Prometheus and Zeus. In many ways, those two characters are going to be the narrators of Phoenix's overall adventure and experience. And I'm going to stop just for a second, just so that the title card and presentation gives you a sense of the, the tone. Cue title. Ubisoft Quebec presents the video game formerly known as Gods and Monsters. So that's kind of a quick glimpse of a little bit of what you're going to expect with the <clears throat> tone or the scope of Phoenix Rising, but even as they're uh, making jokes about the developer and the publisher itself, uh, you, you kind of have a sense that this really is a little bit looser with the humor than some of the other adventure games. Now, as you can see right here, uh, Phoenix is using her Farsight, which is an ability to scan the entire map as she sees it uh, of the Golden Isle itself to locate different uh locations, statues, uh, points of interest that she may want to adventure to. In fact, everything that you see on screen, whether it happens to be uh, a, a cliff or a, a canyon, something else, she can reach, whether by foot, with Daedalus's wings, uh, horseback, or any other means of transportation. Now, and that gives you a large sense of the scope of exactly what this game is, even outside of the jokes to another uh, competing adventure franchise. This uh, game, Phoenix Rising, is set on basically what is known as the Golden Isle, and this part of the demo takes place somewhere within the middle of the game. Uh, the Golden Isle itself is basically broken into seven distinct regions, each one dedicated to a particular uh, god themselves. So, Phoenix has had a little bit of time to gather some of her abilities and gear. So as you can see, she has an axe attack, she has the ability to quickly dodge and parry incoming attacks, whether it happens to be the soldiers that she just defeated or this snake-like creature that she's fighting. She'll even go up against uh, Cyclops in a, in a quick moment. Um, as you can see, <clears throat> she's very quick, very agile with her movements. Um, but she also, in the bottom right hand of the screen, has a number of special abilities that the gods have given her, or I guess gifted her, in service of their particular goals, which is essentially to help save the Golden Isle itself. Again, this is a massive, massive area. Um, but as you just saw, she had uh, Hephaestus' uh, hammer, which is the most powerful attack that she has, which causes a large area of effect amount of damage. She has uh, Ares' wrath, which is kind of a a spike attack where spikes launch themselves up from the ground, as well as Athena's dash where she uses a shield to run through, as you just see, run through or into opponents and bash into them with, with her shield causing damage. All of these items, all these uh, skills and, and powers can be upgraded over time as you start gaining new uh, items and abilities on, on the uh, on the adventure. And of course, the more attacks and combos that you manage to do, as you saw with that uh, Cyclops fight, the more uh, ingredients and extras and gold that you wind up uh, picking up, as well as experience points, which you will then use to enhance and augment Phoenix. That brings me to a really important point, which is that Phoenix isn't a demigod or a god or goddess in any stretch of the imagination. In fact, she's a regular mortal. She's a sailor that was ripped from the ancient world that was basically brought to the Golden Isles to be a champion for the Olympian gods. The reason being is that Typhon, the <clears throat> titan that was imprisoned in Tartarus and in the underworld, has managed to figure out a way to escape uh, his bonds and is now coming 
coming after the Olympian this gods. So instead of placing a, a demigod that everyone has heard of or even a hero from legend, the Olympians decided that it probably made a little bit more sense to get a human being that would probably fly under Typhon's radar and notice to be their champion to help liberate and defend the Golden Isle from his legions of, of followers and monsters that he has gathered. One interesting thing about this particular thing within the uh, underworld or this Tartarus Rift uh, is that uh, because Phoenix is a, is a human being, she's going to need to use items and find items that would allow her to do things that a normal mortal would not be able to do. For instance, you just saw that she has uh, Heracles bracers. That allows her to pick up or push objects that are much heavier than anything she could carry on a regular basis. It also allows her to grab and lift things that are from much larger distances, which is important because this particular tar Tartarus Rift really focuses on puzzle solving aspects. As you can see, uh, there's a little bit more uh, placing blocks on pressure plates to raise platforms or activate platforms, or even uh, right here, as you can see, placing boxes so that she can gain completely new areas uh, so she can continue moving. And if you also look at that uh, little blue bar on the left-hand side next to her character as she's jumping and flying, it also indicates one other thing that's very vital about Phoenix herself. Again, she's a mortal, so she gets tired. And that is her stamina bar, which means that as she's lifting boxes, as she's throwing things, as she's exerting herself or even using her abilities, she will become uh, exhausted. And so you'll either need to take breaks and take little rest moments so that she can recover, or you'll have to use stamina potions that you'll be able to brew later on in the game to recover her stamina and allow her to continue uh, some of her adventuring. As you move further along in the game, of course, you'll wind up being able to enhance that stamina stat and, and even uh, manage to make the stamina loss from exerting herself decrease in, in certain areas, which is very important, especially when you have, have to fly over large distances or possibly scale um, very tall cliffs or mountains, and you happen to be possibly on the ground and you need to to get to your next target, which is very, very uh, high above you. Um, that That is one of those things that you're going to have to figure out. Just like in this Tartarus Rift, we're trying to figure out exactly what we need to do. Not all of the rifts within Tartarus are going to be the same. This one, as I mentioned earlier, has been really focused on puzzle solving, on placing boxes on, on different objects. And right now we're in a completely new section where we're using archery skills to hit archery targets, some of which move, some of which uh, descend depending upon where we are. But other parts of the Tartarus Rifts sometimes play out more like arenas where you're thrown into different areas against some of the mythological creatures that you'll face within the game. That could be minotaurs, cyclopses, medusae, any other harpies, any number of creatures that you may have heard about from myths. So you really kind of have to scout around and figure out exactly what you're doing, how you're accomplishing your goals. The other thing is you also need to try to explore and examine every single part of the Tartarus Rift. They're not always linear, and in some cases they may have items or extra things that are scattered around in some of these locations. So you really do kind of have to pay a certain amount of attention. Now as I mentioned, we're trying to get through uh, this particular part of the Rift and we have to hit our targets. And one of the things, uh, along with trying to balance our stamina, and try to uh, control our arrows is we're trying to make sure that we have exactly what we need. Uh, this is a, somewhat of a tricky thing to do. Uh, obviously, this is one of the moments where uh, Phoenix is just figuring out some of the elements of uh, uh, Apollo's arrow, but we've got a little bit of a handle on it now. We've managed to direct the arrow to that moving target, which allows us to open up a doorway to continue along our path. These are some of the puzzles, of course, like I mentioned, that you're going to be facing within the underworld, but you'll also some, run into some of these in the overworld, too. In fact, as soon as we finish this particular section, I'm going to show you one really quick overworld section, which is kind of a, a myth quest, where you'll be able to uh, use some of these abilities to fulfill some of the items that have been talked about and written about in classical Greek literature for millennia, or at least have been uh, read for millennia because of the, the classic stories that were told uh, since then. 
uh, again, uh, Phoenix is basically using her, her, her archery skills as well as uh, Heracles' brazers. One of the interesting things about uh, this particular Phoenix is that this one is not going to be the same as your Phoenix or the Phoenix that you might have of a friend. And part of that's because you can completely customize Phoenix, not only her look and uh, the, the way that she even approaches things based off of uh, the armor that she has and even customizing the look of the armor and the weapons, but you can also kind of use the abilities and, and items that you get to enhance her skills to pick and choose things based off of your playstyle. You might be more interested in having ranged attacks being more powerful, or you might want to focus on your axe or your club skills. Well, in using this particular uh, item, which is uh, Zeus's lightning bolts, items which were gathered up by Typhon and scattered throughout the Golden Isle and Tartarus so that Zeus would not be able to completely imprison him again, you can use these shards of these lightning bolts to not only uh, enhance and level up Phoenix, but also use them as skill points to place in whatever uh, category that you want, making your Phoenix completely different than anybody else's. And of course, a large amount of Phoenix's rising quest is Phoenix's choice. As you can see here, Prometheus is saying, she basically has a pick on exactly where she wants to go. And even if she wants to leave this particular area, she can. Of course, doing different missions and different tasks isn't always going to be as simple as it seems. As you can see in the background, there's a vortex there, and part of that's because Typhon is starting to notice exactly what you're doing. If you wind up going into different areas, and you vanquish a lot of the, the monsters and soldiers that he's gathered, he might send waves of those creatures after you. If you wind up accomplishing a lot of the tasks which come close to liberating that part of the Golden Isle, he might set up, as you can see on the screen here, what's known as a Wraith Zone, which is where he will summon the shadow or kind of a dark part of a, of a classic hero to throw up against you. As you can see, he's got the Wraith of Odysseus, who's basically coming after us summoning up different soldiers or even uh, additional copies of himself to attack us while also throwing his sword and his shield at us. Fortunately, we can use uh, Phoenix's Phoenix, known as Phosphorus, to attack and distract uh, Odysseus, which will also uh, release these little orbs on the ground, which are stamina orbs, which will allow us to use some of these special abilities and attacks, whether it happens to be Hephaestus's hammer or Ares's wrath, things like that. Uh, we can also uh, try to focus solely upon this particular wraith trying to whittle down his strength and, and weaken him so that we can perform basically a killing blow to disperse this hero. One thing that is important important to note, however, is that every single time that you face off against one of these heroes, it's not exactly going to be the same whenever they wind up coming back, because they are like recurring heroes. Just because we managed to fight this uh, Wraith and he maybe summons two soldiers, the next time we face him, he might summon five. Or maybe he'll come in with a couple different creatures, like some Harpies or some Medusa, to, to try to freeze us in place. It really varies, so you always have to stay on your toes whenever you wind up running into a Wraith zone. Now, of course, getting away from some of those fights, this is one of the things that I mentioned like a few minutes ago where you're going into a myth challenge. This one takes place specifically or is inspired by uh, the Odyssey where Odysseus himself had to shoot an arrow through the circular loops of 12 axes placed in a row to be eligible to win the hand of Penelope for marriage. Well, of course, that's physically impossible within the real world, but because we have the ability of Apollo's arrow, we can actually direct the arrow that we fired through the various axes, which are scattered around this environment to reach its inevitable target and thereby complete this particular challenge. In doing so, we open up a rift and we gain an item. Depending upon what it is, it might be a new weapon, it might be a new piece of armor. In this case, it's the Coins of Charon, which can be redeemed for additional items farther along in the adventure. And you can use those uh, as you will as well. In, in many ways, a lot of this game is frequently about choice. We're getting towards the tail end of this particular demo. But I want to bring up this one item right here, which is the Cauldron of Circe. As I mentioned before, depending upon what you wind up gathering in the environment on your travels, or as you wind up defeating different monsters and solving different puzzles, you wind up getting ingredients. These ingredients can then be brought to these cauldrons and used to brew up new potions. Some of these are very, very useful and work exactly the way that you would expect. For instance, a health potion whenever you're being uh, damaged, or even a strength potion to provide additional damage in fight. 
fights, always very useful. You can also have things which will defray the, uh, the amount of damage that you take when you're in battle, or like I mentioned earlier, the stamina potions. Always very important whenever you're trying to make your way from one part of the environment to the other. In the upper right hand of the screen, you can see some of the ingredients that we've gathered, and we can craft as many as we want in one group, and you'll see Phoenix basically stirring the cauldron up together to build up exactly what her stockpile will be, and she'll celebrate with a nice mug. That's a quick look at Immortals Phoenix Rising. Again, it's coming out on December 3rd, 2020. For more games and advice to fit your family, be sure to check out commonsensemedia.org.